Okay, in this tutorial we're going to have a look at making this graphic loop. Okay, so we're going to have a look at how we do this in Final Cut Pro using shapes. We're going to look at animation, we're going to look at creating compound clips, and then we're going to look at how we get the timing right so that this can loop continually over a minute or over whatever time duration you want. And the techniques that we're going to cover here are, will be really useful in creating other graphic loops that you, you might want to create as well. Okay, so we'll close this up for the moment and we'll head straight into Final Cut Pro. So we have a timeline set up here and we're going to come down to our generators panel on the bottom right here. Okay, we are in the elements section of this. Okay, and we're generating shapes. So if you don't see the generators panel, just click on the generators button here. It'll turn blue and go to elements and you'll see the shapes generator here. Okay, so we're going to drag this straight onto the timeline. And then once we're in the timeline, we're just going to hit shift and Z and zoom right in. Okay, so once we've got our generator on the timeline, we're just going to edit this a little bit um, so that we've, we're losing the stroke around the outside. Okay, so we're going to take the outline off. Okay, and then we're also going to scroll down and take off the, the drop shadow as well. Okay, so we just set all these drop shadow options to zero. Okay, so now we need to animate, first of all, just this one circle itself. And we want basically it to get from the center to the edge in about five seconds. So we're going to halve the duration of our circle on the timeline here. Okay, so I'm going to bring this back to around five seconds. Okay, so we're going to come to the beginning here. And now we're going to jump out of the generator tab here. And if you're not seeing the options up here, you just need to go to window, show inspector, to bring up the inspector where you'll get the options for the generator, the video, and the info for that, that particular clip on the timeline. So we're going to go to video. We'll make sure we've got this shape selected. Okay, and then we're going to scroll down until we see the, the scale option. Okay, and we're going to scale this right down to zero. Okay, and then we're going to add a keyframe by clicking the little diamond on the right hand side here, it should turn yellow. And then we're going to come to the end of this clip on the timeline and just jump one frame back. That means we're animating the, the last frame of this. So I just use the left hand cursor to jump one frame back. And I'm going to scale this up, okay, until it just jumps off the edge of my canvas, okay. So now once I've done that, I'm going to duplicate this layer. And the way that I'm going to duplicate this now animating layer is just by holding down the Alt key and dragging up, okay. Now, all I need to do at this stage is just change this from white to another color so that we can see the distinction between the two different layers. So we're going to come back into the generator options here, and then we're going to change the fill color here to pink. Okay, so at the moment, these two layers are right on top of each other. So what I'm going to do is actually, I'm going to pull this clip ahead in time just a little. So to do this, I'm just going to drag it ahead a little, and I probably want to come ahead just under a second, maybe 16, 17 frames. Okay. Okay, and now I've got this clip offset. I'm actually just going to extend the white out here as well, just so that when the pink expands out to the edge as well, I have uh, some white there as well to cover the background. Okay. So the next thing I want to do is make sure that I can space out the, the clips that I'm going to add above this by the same distance. Okay. So by the, the 17 frames that I've moved this by. So actually now what I'm going to do to, to get this to happen is I'm going to jump between a couple of tools. So I'm going to, first of all, I'm going to select my clip and I'm going to create it into a storyline. Okay. Grouping it or creating it into a storyline is the same thing. And then I'm going to drag this storyline back to the beginning. And then in order to create a slug at the beginning of this clip, so a 17 frame slug, I'm going to jump to the position tool and then just drag this clip ahead in time. So now I've got a slug that's exactly the right size and I can use that and reuse that as I kind of offset clips above this. Let's just uh, scroll up a little here and we are going to go back to the select tool. Okay, we're going to select this storyline and then hold down the alt key and duplicate it. So now in this next storyline, we're going to duplicate the slug that's here. Okay, so I'm going to hold down alt and duplicate that and that will just push back this clip by exactly the same amount. Okay, so you can see I've got the same distance to here. So now with this clip, I want to change it to white. So I'm just going to click on the clip here and then I'm going to push all my RGB sliders up to 255. So it's white. And then I'm going to extend again the pink clip this time below that so that when we get to the end here, our clips are always expanding and we always have color behind that clip that's expanding out at the end. So let's now do the same again. So we'll grab this layer, we'll drag it up, okay, select it, and then 
change it to a hot pink okay and you can choose different colors here if you want if you want to have a variety of colors but I'm keeping it simple here for the moment and then I'm going to duplicate this slug again by holding down alt and dragging it and then you'll see that we start to get this kind of nice target effect that's just continually expanding okay so we could keep adding layers there or we could save ourselves a lot of time by making this into a compound clip and then we can use that to duplicate so I'm going to with the select tool selected hold down shift and just select all of those storylines okay and the bottom layer and then right click and I'm going to create a new compound clip so it's going to wrap all those up into a new compound clip okay so now I have one compound clip that has all that information in there okay now what I want to do is I want to duplicate this compound clip okay so I'm going to hold down alt and drag this up and then I want to move this ahead by the same number of spaces okay so I'm going to double click into the compound clip and I'll just go and select these three spaces the slugs okay and then I'll go back to my timeline so now that I've copied those slugs I can paste those into there and then I can grab this second layer and just drag it into that new group of the, the slugs so it's offset and I just need to offset it one more so I'm going to duplicate these once more okay so now you'll see rather than duplicating just one layer we're duplicating many okay so we'll do this a couple more times duplicate the storyline here push it ahead by duplicating the slug and then I'm getting a little bit of something strange happening in the pattern here so I'm just going to duplicate this slug one more time and push that ahead and then we can see that we continue to get this nice loop happening so in order to loop this um, all we need to happen is for the center to keep growing out and then for one white line at the edge and one pink line at the edge so I'm looking down here at the bottom left to disappear okay so you can see here we've got a white line at the edge right here that disappears and then we've got a pink line that disappears and that's our loop so we need to make sure that we're filling up the center um, when that loop is happening. So we've got one more duplication to make, I think. So we'll pull this up, duplicate the slug up here, and then just, we may need to do this one more time. Okay, so we've got the white line at the edge disappearing and then the pink line disappearing and the center is still growing so we've got our loop there okay so this short section of video for all these layers is basically what we're going to use in the end and that will create our continuous loop so we're going to grab all of these so I'm holding down shift okay and I'm going to right click make a new compound clip click OK and then here I'm looking I'm going frame by frame for when this first little bit of black disappears okay and at that point I'm going to mark an out point by pressing O so I'm deleting the whole bit of this first section and then I'm going to keep just moving ahead until this second pink line disappears so I'm just focusing right down here on the bottom left again okay and when that disappears now I can now mark an endpoint and delete the end of that clip okay so this is my loop so now if I hold down alt and duplicate this a few times and it's alt or option the keyboard to duplicate things if we press play now we'll have our continuous loop so that's how to make a continuous loop we can now export that composite it into another video or we could even composite it onto itself so if we grab this now create that as a another compound clip so we've got a kind of slightly longer loop we could duplicate it increase the scale a little bit okay so 125 percent and then and then we could go up to color correction okay so I'll drag the highlights to a yellow and then I'll just tweak the the midtones as well so we can have a little bit of an offset against the background color here so we'll come back and we'll use a blend mode like linear burn which is gonna combine those two layers so now we've got two loops one playing on top of the other 
and they're going to composite together to create a kind of different effect. So that's a little playing around with loops in Final Cut Pro using some of the generators that we have available in the elements part of the generators panel and then looking at how we could then composite those in to a different pattern. Okay, now you've got lots of different shapes in the generators so have a play around with them, use triangles, use squares and see what types of effects you can get if you scale them or rotate them and you can have some fun with that. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, I hope it was useful and I look forward to seeing you on the next one.